10 days, I followed a legendary lioness called Kamenyak and her adopted oryx calf. I want to know what sparked Kamenyak's strange behavior, so I need to build up a bigger picture of the Samburu lions. Here on the park boundary, there's human settlement. Lions are often killed in conflict with people. The impact it's having on lion society is devastating. I've come to meet lion expert, Dr. Lawrence Frank. It's been his life's work to protect the dwindling lion populations from their greatest enemy, man. It's not that people inherently dislike the predators, it's the fact that the predators kill their livestock. So what we need to do is find ways to better protect the livestock from the predators. Outside national parks, lions and other predators are disappearing very, very fast, where humans kill individuals and disrupt social systems has massive implications for the ability of the surviving lions to continue to feed themselves, reproduce successfully, and so forth. According to Lawrence, lion populations are down almost 90% from two decades ago. In the six years or so I've been doing this work, I've seen maybe, oh, a dozen or 20 lions by day, but that's an awful lot of time spent driving around looking for lions. Lawrence is making a scent trail to draw in an elusive group of males he's been following. They were last seen three months ago in a dangerous area. He's anxious to know how many are still alive. This tape recording of a distressed buffalo is music to lion ears. Irresistible to a cat hot on the scent of a carcass. Conflict with people shatters lion prides. Survivors are left to fend for themselves. Isolated, they're pushed out of their territory and become vagrants. One of the most important things one has to remember about all of these social predators oh. is that the social system itself is absolutely essential to their entire ecology and behavior. They're dependent on their fellows. It's good news. All the males in this coalition are still alive. It means they're not killing livestock, which bodes well for their future. Ah, this is fantastic. I feel so lucky to be watching these secretive lions. Sadly, Lawrence is finding an increasing number of vagrant lions, all survivors of conflict. If Kamenyak's pride has been killed, Lawrence thinks the trauma might well have provoked her extreme behavior. You can imagine a situation. Her entire pride gets poisoned. She's missing her familiar pride mates. This is a very unhappy, confused animal, and all of a sudden, a little baby, not a lion baby, but some sort of baby, comes her way. One can imagine that she could find a certain kind of comfort in taking over a baby. Humans have pets, I think, largely because pets are a child substitute. It doesn't normally happen in animals, but I can imagine it happen, happening very occasionally and unusually. I need to know more about how Kamenyak fits into lion society here in Samburu. I learn that there are three distinct resident lion prides here. To the north is the Koitagor pride seven strong and ranging across a vast territory. South of the river is the Burana pride, eight in total. To the east is the Angaramara pride, five sisters headed by two males. Kamenyak is right in the middle of three pride territories, but she doesn't seem to belong to any particular pride. 
I think Kamenyak is solitary. And if she is solitary, then she doesn't have any female relatives to defend her. And that means she'll be at the mercy of any hostile lions that come along. Without a pride, Kamenyak's life is bleak. At the heart of a pride is a central core of related females, sisters, mothers and aunts. From the start, the cub is never alone. Females bear cubs at the same time and raise young together in a nursery. Growing up in this close-knit society, bonds form that last a lifetime. While daughters remain in the pride, sons are pushed out. Pride males provide security and will fight to the death defending their family. Amongst lions, the fabric of society is everything. I've been away two days, and I'm anxious to see Kamenyak. She's nervous and edgy. She won't let the calf out of sight. It's now 12 days they've been together. Surrounded by hostile lions, the stress is beginning to show. She and the calf are starving. Both so wasted, it's amazing they've survived this long. Lions need to kill every four days or so, but Kamenyak won't leave the oryx, so she can't hunt. Her obsession is killing them both. Less than a month old, the calf can't survive without its mother's milk. It's nibbling leaves, but can't digest them. There's still two months to go before it's weaned. It's hard to believe, but to have survived this long, somehow the calf got back to its mother to suckle while still under Kamenyak's guard. It's so hungry, it even tries to suckle from Kamenyak. The calf's constant quest for milk is exhausting Kamenyak. Whenever she can, she sleeps. Mothering the calf is really taking its toll. The Samburu people have spent their lives amongst lions. The warriors want to show my footage of Kamenyak to their families. In Samburu legend, there are stories where lions befriend their prey. <coughs> but seeing it for real, no one can believe their eyes. <laughs> the perception the Samburu have of their greatest enemy, the lion, has changed forever. Kamenyak's fame spreads throughout the land. This tale is 